Welcome back. In this video, we're going to implement attack functionality for the character. We're going to add a boolean called alive so we can know if a character or an enemy is alive or dead. We're going to swing the sword by changing its rotation, and we're also going to implement weapon collision so we can know if we've hit an enemy with the sword. Let's get started. Now we need a bool called alive so we can know if a character or an enemy is alive or not. So I'm going to go over to basecharacter.h and place this variable here. I'm going to make it private. So I'm going to say bool alive, and by default I'll set this to true since all characters should start off alive. Now we're going to need to access and set this, so I'll create a getter and a setter in the public section. First the getter will return a bool, and it'll be called get alive. And it's going to simply return alive. We're also going to create a setter, which will return void, and it'll be called set alive, and it'll take an input parameter of type bool, and we'll call this is alive, and all we're going to do is set alive to is alive. Now, how are we going to use this? Well, in the characters tick function, we can check this value. So we'll say if get alive. And if we're not alive, there's no point in having any of our tick functionality be called. Well, we can check to see if we're not alive using the not operator. And if we're not alive, we can simply return. This will end the function before any of the other lines get called. Now, let's go into the enemy class as well and put this line at the top of the tick function because the enemy should not call any of its tick functionality if it's not alive either. This includes movement and drawing these characters. Great. Now let's handle rotating the weapon. So here in character.cpp, in the tick function, we're going to scroll down to our if statement that checks to see which direction we're facing. Now if we're facing right, I would like to rotate the sword by 35 degrees if the left mouse button is being pressed. Now Raylib has a function for that called is mouse button down. Now we have to specify the mouse button. We're going to use the left mouse button and the variable for that is mouse left button. Now this function will continue to return true every single frame as long as the mouse button is being held down. If that's the case, we want rotation to be 35 and if the mouse button is up, we want it to be zero. Now we could use an if statement for that but this if statement is simple enough to use the ternary operator instead. Remember, the ternary operator has the conditional first, followed by a question mark, and then the statement that we want executed if the conditional is true. In that case, we'll be setting rotation to 35.f. We then have a single colon, followed by the statement we want executed if the conditional is false. In that case, we're setting rotation to 0.f. Okay, so that's for when we're facing right, but what about when we're facing left? Go ahead and take care of that scenario by replacing this line. Only if the mouse button is being pressed, set rotation to negative 35. Awesome, so we're going to say is mouse button down using the mouse left button, and if it's true, we'll set rotation to negative 35.f. And if it's false, we'll set rotation to 0.f. Let's run this and see how it works. Okay, so I'm going to hold the left mouse button down, and you can see that the sword is swung by 35 degrees. And if we face left, it's swung the other way. So now we can swing the sword all we want, and our knight is a bit more dangerous. Okay, so now to take care of collision. Now we've added a weapon collision wreck to our character's private section, but we're going to need to access this from outside the function, so we're going to create a public getter for this. Why don't you go ahead and type this out? That's right, it's going to return a rectangle. We'll call this get weapon collision rec, and it's going to return weapon collision rec. So now we have a public getter for weapon collision rec. And we already know how to check to see whether two rectangles are colliding or not. So your challenge is going to be to check for collisions whenever the character is attacking. We're going to do this in the main function in the while loop. 
At the very bottom of the while loop, just before we end drawing, you're going to use another raylib function called isMousebuttonPressed. Now we just used is mouse button down, that returns true every frame if we're holding the mouse button down, but is mouse button pressed is a little different. It only returns true as soon as we click the mouse button, and then it keeps returning false unless we click the mouse button again, so we get more of a one-off type behavior. Use an if check and check to see if mouse button pressed is true. If it is, then you're going to check collision recs. This will use another if statement. For check collision recs, you're going to pass in the goblin's collision rectangle using its get collision rec, and you're also going to pass in the knight's weapon collision rectangle that we'll access using our new function get weapon collision rec. Now, if check collision recs returns true, I want you to take the goblin and call its set alive setter for the alive boolean and set it to false. That way, all the functionality in the base character tick function. That way, its tick functionality will no longer happen, and we should see it disappear as soon as we hit it with the sword. Pause the video and do this now. Okay, so we're going to go over to the main source file, and down at the bottom of the while loop, just after the goblin ticks, we're going to make an if statement, and we're going to use is mouse button pressed. And we're going to use the mouse left button. And inside this if statement, we'll have another statement using check collision recs. And this is going to require two rectangles. For the first one, we're going to pass in the goblin's collision rectangle by calling get collision rec on the goblin. And for the second one, we're going to use the collision rectangle for the weapon. And we'll get that from the knight by calling get weapon collision rec. Now in this if statement, if we've made it this far, then that means we've clicked the left mouse button and our weapon's collision rec is overlapping with the goblin's collision rec. And in that case, we're going to take the goblin and call set alive, passing in false. Now before we test this out, let's go back into enemy.cpp to this line that we commented out where we're updating world pause. Remove that double slash. So now the enemy will be able to chase the character again. Now we can test this out. All right, there's the enemy chasing us and we can swing the sword. And if we swing the sword while our rectangle is overlapping with the enemy, then it disappears. Excellent. So in summary, we added attack functionality for the character so we can now swing the sword and detect collisions between the weapon's collision rectangle and the goblin's collision rectangle. If we hit the goblin, we then set its alive boolean to false, effectively destroying the goblin. Awesome! We'll see you in the next video.